So the UDP scanning, are you open on UDP 25? No response to port is open. If, um, if port is closed, ICMP port unreachable message is received. So you'll get an ICMP message when you send this uh, UDP scan. So the UDP port open. There is no three-way TCP handshake for UDP scans. So the difference between TCP and UDP, which is critical for you to understand, and you will see this on the test, TCP is a full connection. UDP, I'm just talking like this video. I don't know if anybody's watching this, right? I have no idea. Um, so I'm just talking, and I don't care if you hear it or not. Um, but if you're talking back to me, then that's a full connect scan, right? So that's TCP. So TCP is more like a classroom. UDP is more like a video. I'm just talking. I don't know that anyone will ever see it, okay? So the TCP is just a broadcast. It, there's no handshaking. I'm not talking to you and expecting a response. I'm just talking. Whether you hear me or not, I don't care. Think video streaming. I'm just putting it out there. Whether or not you consume it, I don't care. If you miss a couple of packets, I don't care because the video is going to keep coming. You might see a scratch or a blank screen for a second and then it'll come back. So the system does not respond with a message when the port is open. UDP port closed. If a UDP packet is sent to a closed port, the system responds with an ICMP port unreachable message. So spyware, Trojan horses, and other malicious applications use UDP ports for communication. So that's pretty much it for the UDP scanning. Um, if the port is open, you get an ICMP message back. If it's closed, I'm sorry, if it's closed, you get an ICMP message back. If it's open, you don't get anything. ICMP echo scanning or a list scan. So I, ICMP echo scanning. This is not really port scanning since ICMP does not have a port abstraction, but it is sometimes useful to determine which host and a network are up by pinging them all. So that's an echo scan. And then a list scan, this type of scan simply generates and prints a list of IP and names without actually pinging them. A reverse DNS resolution is carried out to identify the root ho or the host names. So this is kind of a little bit of a different thing than what we were previously talking about. So um, we're talking about a tool here called NetScan Tools Pro, so the professional version. Network Tools Pro um, assists in troubleshooting, diagnosing, monitoring, and discovering devices on the network. It lists IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, host names, domain names, email addresses, and URLs automatically or with manual tools. So that's NetScan Tools Pro. You will see a test question about this on what's it for. It's a scanning tool. Here's a bunch more. Most uh, commonly, you're going to use Nmap, and that's usually good enough. But you might need some specialty tools. You might have, um, you might understand fully and learn Nmap as you are going to do for this test because you have to know Nmap for this test. There's no question about it. You have to know Nmap. You have to know what the dash capital S little s is. You have to know what the dash capital O is. All of those switches and flags you need to know just about all of them. Um, we'll go over some test questions at the end, and you'll see that there's going to be a bunch of questions about that. You need to know that. Um, some of these other school uh, tools you may use in real life if you're kind of a tool kitty, uh, where you're not so familiar with the command line. So don't take that as a derogatory term. It's just because you don't know the command line. You're not a developer. You're not used to it. It might take you some time to get there. They're much more powerful. They're much better. They're more easy to automate things. So you want to kind of go to that way if you can. If you're just going to kind of stick your foot in this pool every now and then, you're not really going to dive in then some of these graphical tools may be better. You can click and fire as you need to. So IP tools is a good one here. Superscan, I've heard good things about that. I haven't actually used it. Um, those are the only ones I'm familiar with. Scanning tools for mobile. So again, we've got all this stuff for mobile. Don't discount it. It's a huge space nowadays. Keep in mind that phones can bypass all of that border gear that you've got. You've got millions of dollars in appliances on your egress points. And now a mobile device can let them go right around it and exfiltrate an entire database and you have no idea. So you want to have some control over your mobile network. Um, so let's go over some of the names. We have the UMIT network scanner, Fing IP network scanner. Um, you can see that that's for Droid. Port Droid network analysis, PIN IP scanner, network discovery. Um, so port scanning countermeasures. Okay, so let's see what can we do about 
port scanning. So I mentioned previously that a lot of these scans, some of the newer ones we talked about towards the end there, <clears throat> some of the older ones, they'll easily be detected by appliances. They're actually built for it. Um, smurfing, um, ping of death, all that stuff is caught now. It's not uh, legit anymore. So configure firewall and IDS rules to detect and block probes. So you want to have them looking for it. Um, if you're able to ping something and it accepts the ping of death and you kill the gear or reset the gear, then uh, that is absolutely a find, right? But maybe it's a honeypot you hit or something like that too. So, But anyway, it will help exercise the gear even if you use those old scans, which you need to understand what they are. If someone is throwing out of your network, you need to recognize that it's an attack. And it's uh, special kinds of attacks, right? They're specific kinds. Um, they're not... They can't be mistaken for legit traffic. So if someone's throwing these at your network, or if you as a pen tester are throwing them at a network, then you're exercising the gear, and you should see that in the log, ping of death caught. You wanna know what it looks like, you wanna be able to characterize it. So you, I wanna know exactly what time you sent it, UTC, right? So you wanna make sure that you're using UTC time, or that you translate all of your times to UC, UTC. So when you give the report to someone, it's useful, they can go in the logs and say, yeah, we saw that ping of death, we didn't respond to it, we'll work on that, you know, whatever. That's helping the organization by flexing those tools, right? Mm -hmm.